Okay guys, so this is an update on the health of Furio. How are we going? I thought I'd just start today's video with a little excerpt from today's AMA by Forex Shark from the Drip Network. I committed to at the launch of Drip that the core mechanics of our core contracts will never change. And I made this commitment. And the reason why I made this commitment is twofold. One, because these are contracts where your principal is being locked. And we can't have contracts where your principal is being locked. And then we change the rules after you've locked your principal. So for that reason, we will never change any of the core mechanics of Drift. And then secondly, there were so many other projects out there and there have been so many other products out there that were good. They worked, you know, uh, through, through price cycles, prices up, prices down, they work and they continue to pay out yield. But then the developers, for whatever reason, you know, they get greedy or some of them have good intentions, but they just, you know, they can't take being in a bear cycle and they can't take the price being down. So they try to make some change to make the price go up and it ends up just ruining the system, either outright breaking the system, uh, allowing for some exploits, just changing the game theory. Uh, if you have a system where people are getting their principal locked up and then you change the rules of the system after that, it makes everybody who would consider locking up their principal lose confidence, knowing that there's a chance that they could lock their principal under these terms and then the terms could change after the fact. So I made this commitment that we would never change the core mechanics of Drip. So that was from a great, fantastic AMA that Forex Shark did give about the Drip ecosystem earlier today. Uh, you can find it on Barterton's channel. I was watching on Barterton here. Shout out to the squad, of course. Imagine Barterton, you finally made it onto a Furio video. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, we do have Driptopian here as well, that handsome lad just down there. So that's cool. Um, check that out. If you do want, you know where to find Barterton. He's, you know, go in the Drip chat, you find him, right? Today, a Medium post was put out by Furio where they have changed the core mechanics of the contract once again. That's right. We have had the LMS put in to fix the price, which was then not working. So it fell down to the lower level and started draining the LMS. We've had the fur bot, which took over $2 million from the LMS and has so far been doing pretty badly and losing money from the LMS as opposed to gaining it. Then we had limits put on our selling of the token, which were uh, yielding the fur token where we're only allowed to sell 100 fur tokens a day and now today we've been announced this brand new piece of fantastic news from the team furio now let's check it out coming into today's announcement by furio now this uh i'm going to miss the beginning of it because they go through some jargon of course the market's difficult they've been working very hard the global economy is terrible their intention has always been great so there's a couple of things i actually disagree with here or that really kind of pushed my buttons i guess the first was the fact that they claimed that the the immaturity of certain members of the DeFi community. Now, I don't know who that's aiming at. Uh, as you know, I've been a little bit critical of some of the moves that Fury has made in the past because I didn't think they were gonna work out very well. And if you want my full view on that, I also talk about another project coming out called Arc, uh, which I'm not going into. That's in this video up here where I talk about a big problem in DeFi today, right? I, I wouldn't see it as immature though. I'd see my thoughts, my opinions actually as kind of critical thinking. Um, because we want to get the bag. That's what we want. We want the bag. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to get the bag this time. These individuals need to have a long, hard look at themselves. You are the fools that DeFi needs to get rid of as it matures. So this is pretty aggressive here from the Furio dev team. And I, to be honest, I don't really appreciate the rhetoric. Like I said, I'd rather focus on improving the project than actually replying or fighting back against fighters. It's actually quite immature on their part to, to, to mention it. Um, especially at the beginning of this certain article, which really does undermine their, their decisions. <laughs> We're also aware of people adopting a first to the lifeboat mentality. Uh, this is fair enough. Um, I have uh, if we come to my fantastic DGen Farmer spreadsheet. This is V1 because V2 is coming out on Sunday, right? But um, this has the ROI section where I track my ROI projects. 
Furio's in here for now. Horde got taken off because they've given up on the LMS. They've retired the LMS, right? From the originators of the LMS, they're not using it anymore. So you can see the price is still $4.47, which is on the lower end of the, their set LMS, but more on that very soon. That's changing, by the way. As you can see, I invested a total of 5,652 across all my accounts. I have Team Mischief. I made one for the man where I put $1,000 into that. Uh, bad idea. I made one on the second team. I bought some NFTs and also I've had $1,000 in the fur pool. And I did start selling. I've taken so far 4,316 from my total investment in fur I'm still down but if I did get out of the fur pool then I'd be just down a couple of hundred bucks so five thousand dollars compounded up to about 19,000 furio tokens but I didn't start claiming until about two weeks ago uh, that's where what I think most people did when they did instill this sell limit which made me think nah this is not the right uh, attitude to use in an ROI DAP because our initial is locked. We are prisoners in there if you're going to say that I can't sell when I want to sell and I can't claim when I want to claim. Like there was already a lot of limitations on Furio and this just made it a lot worse for me and I wasn't too keen on it anymore. Uh, this I didn't do. Uh, others were bypassing the restrictions and transferring tokens without the regard for others. So I guess what they were doing was claiming out all their tokens. You can sell 100 a day on your wallet, sending it to another wallet, and then selling that too, eating the tax. But that is filling the tax vault, but then the tax vault doesn't seem to be so important for Furio because they continually mint tokens anyway with the LMS. It's this first to lifeboat approach that drives projects to the ground. The funds in the LMS are a result of the diligent trading by the team, and they will be used to generate returns. Um, no. So <laughs> this sentence, this one here, actually really uh, stands strong for me. Them saying that the LMS, the funds in the LMS, are the result of diligent trading by the team is not entirely true. The funds in the LMS are from the community of Furio, right? purchasing or the investors actually i wouldn't even go as far as say community anymore the investors into furio purchasing the token and locking it into the contract creating the funds the liquidity that is the lms it's not yours this lms it's supposed to be the investors lms and you're being responsible with it but from this sentence it makes it seem like actually the furio dev team believe that the liquidity is actually theirs right they own the liquidity now and we are just sacrificial lambs that if we we just have to stand by while, while they can change the price, set down the LMS to a lower price, uh, take their rewards, of course, from doing this, and then have a great day. Because, of course, the Furio token does have certain tokenomics that when it is bought or sold, there are taxes. Some of the taxes go to the development team. So when the LMS is put up or down, there will be a certain amount of funds going to the Furio dev team. And when they set it down further, what we're going to talk about very soon, there will be quite a nice reward going to the developers <laughs> because of their diligent trading, of course, very diligent. With the markets as they are, with no indication of an upturn for the foreseeable future, we will be introducing changes to ensure the longevity of Furio and protect the community. Thanks, guys. So there's three options, of course, freeze the contracts. Why would you even mention that? That means that they can do that. Remember, they can do it. They could freeze the contracts. Actually, they have right now. Uh, you can't actually claim your Furio, I don't think. You can only compound it, I think. We're going to look at that. Uh, <laughs> carry on as is and watch the LMS go to get abused to zero. You could just turn it off, you know. It doesn't work. It sucks. A horde of thrown it in the bin. Uh, <laughs> any other projects I have at Bloom if I went to nothing. Liquidity Capital went to nothing with the LMS. Furio is going to go to nothing with the LMS. Trust me on this. We are going to zero. Uh, implement very low no-sell limits. So of course, that's the one they're going to do because they can continue to milk this and get the development fees. We've obviously chosen op option three. We don't believe in freezing contracts unless there's an absolute state of emergency and it goes against the objective of our end goal, immutability. Hmm. Uh, it's not immutable because you can change the core values of contract. <laughs> so we're going to adopt option three while they implement these changes, right? But the sell facility is paused for a limited time. So they have indeed frozen the contracts while they implement very low sell limit. So they've done one and two, essentially. We don't know when it will be unpaused or unfrozen. Nothing else has impacted though, nothing. You just, just you can't sell your tokens. Yeah. Nothing, everything is fine. Also, oh, sorry, one other thing. Your fur pool withdrawals are paused too because they're going to be changing that. Anyone who sells and is in a negative position 
compound rate of 0.5%, 50% of your cell will be staked in fur pool for you at a 30 day rate. Okay, okay, fun and games over. I'm actually gonna stop being uh, sarky, passive aggressive or something. I'm actually gonna give you my opinion on what I do think would in some way fix this problem by comparing it to what they're actually gonna do and why I disagree with that, right? Anyone who sells in a, and is in a negative position, 0.5 compound rate, 50% of your cell will be staked in the fur pool for you at the 30 day rate. So it means your, your half your cell will be stuck in fur pool for 30 days, adding to liquidity and backing up the token value. If you're existing higher rate staker, it will be at a higher rate. You will be able to claim your fur pool USDC rewards on a daily basis or compound them. So essentially they're moving your rewards from being able to claim here and sell in the vault, going into the fur pool, where then you can take out your available USDC every day, which is fair enough. I actually think that is a great idea. Let's read on. Anyone who sells and is in a positive rate position, 1% or above, that's me, I stuck about 1%, I think I'm exactly at 1% now actually, 25% of your sell will be staked in the fur pool for you at a 30 day rate. If you're an existing higher rate staker, it will be at a higher rate. You will be able to claim your fur pool USDC rewards on a daily basis or compound these. So this is all very good, right? Uh, but what I think they should do is take 100% of all claimable fur goes into the fur pool and you claim out USDC until the market is back pumping. That's what I do, honestly. I, maybe it's cutthroat, right? But that's exactly what I do. Then you don't need to change or touch the LMS price because it doesn't really matter what the LMS price is because you're taking out USDC from staking to the fur pool. Now, I don't know in theory if this would actually cause a massive issue for the fur pool because people would be continually draining out USDC of it from it maybe it would then in part cause a bit of a bank run on the fur price i'm not sure how it would play out in theory but i'd take the gamble because it's going to zero anyway like i said the lms price is going to move until further notice to the range of 0 0.9 usdc to 1.1 usdc this is uh, awful <laughs> because it was set at 4.5 before people bought in at 12 dollars or whatever before it was turned on then it went to 5.5 which wrecked a lot of people they just had enough time to kind of recover to that by compounding extensively and trying to get into vip club and things uh the 2.5 percent apr club and now they are going to be punished again by being put down to 1.1 or uh, i mean immediately this is going down to 0 0.9 immediately down to 0 0.9 i believe right because everyone is going to be getting out of this this uh first to the <laughs> lifeboat mentality was i like the way they put that Probably gonna use that as a thumbnail. Before we move on, I need to take a quick picture for the thumbnail. I don't know, try to think of what kind of face best describes how I feel right now. Probably like. I think that one pretty much sums it up. Or like normal crypto face, you know. This reflects the current position of the market, by the way. That's why it's going down to $1. Uh, it gives everyone the opportunity to compound for future and more positive market conditions. So your days of claiming a profit are over for everyone in Furio now, you're not gonna be able to do it. Or I guess you could take the risk and buy back in at $1 and hope that they don't reduce it again. Um, but the past president now that's been set of them fiddling with the recipe is already in, right? So I'd be very, very wary about doing that. Furpool, okay. Furpool, I've already been wrecked twice on this, so let's do it again. Furpool has been running for over three months now and we're committed to ensuring it maintains its fantastic role in the ecosystem. Great job, guys. We will safeguard the funds to try and minimize any exposure to impermanent loss and that it continues to pay the most attractive rates on USDC. Now, what they're saying here is, um, for example, for me, I went into the Furpool on the 22nd of August right, uh, this year. So we're three months in fur pool. I invested $1,000 into it. My current value in the fur pool today is $1,062, right? That's my stake. So I did get up to above $1,000, got up to like 1,200, but then they said on the LMS and it crashed it down to about 800. I recovered up to 1,062. I do have another 72 pending. So that's good. So I've gotten about 100, I've got about 10% back in three months. 
if I did pull it out right now. But now they're going to be setting it down from 4.47, what it is right now, to $1 or 95 cents, which means that if they do are still paired in liquidity, that is going to destroy my stake down to about 300. So their plan is to transfer everyone's LP tokens to a new LP at the new price of fur, so your existing stakes does not have any impermanent loss. It won't have impermanent loss, but then there are fur and USDC in a liquidity pool. You have two tokens in an LP, one is USDC, one is fur, they're 50-50, right? One is $4.5, one is $1, the USDC is $1. Then you're gonna be, I guess, unpairing them. And then you're going to have your USDC. So say it's 500 bucks of USDC and 500 bucks of fur. Then they're going to lower the LMS of the fur. And then you're going to pair them back up. But that means that actually you're still going to be losing uh, value, dollar value of your LP. So I don't expect to see my same dollar value of LP once this is all said and done with. But I might be proven wrong. If I am, then that's fantastic. Or they're selling the token. The new LP will be sat in a much tighter bracket. Uh, with potential gains with market conditions increasing the LMS. Now, there is no precedent. Let me make this very clear. There is no precedent for the LMS ever going up. It's only ever gone down. In Bloomify, they accidentally turned it off and the whole thing dumped very fast, flash crashed, and then they turned it back on at a lower rate. Eventually, they lost the trust after they adjusted the LMS and this project went to zero in about 30 days or less. Um, the LMS was not turned off in the hoard. It was thrown in the bin. They just got rid of it because it doesn't work. <laughs> and then they talk about fur fi. Fur fi is their yield farm. It seems like they've given up on the fur bet idea for gamble, whatever it's called, their casinos. We went at the pre-sale for it, but it never happened. So that's just uh, not happening, I guess. So now fur pool will be enhanced with an income stream from fur fi or something. Uh, great, but fur fi isn't running yet. So this is another, this is an empty promise. Okay. In summary, all the fundamentals of Furia are maintained. No, they're not. I cannot sell my tokens when I want to sell them. The price is being adjusted to reflect the current state of the market. No, it's not. The price is being adjusted so that you can get your developer fee out of the lowering of the LMS and cash out more money. A proportion of sales are going to be used to support fur pool. This gives the user an enhanced income stream by daily USDC. Um, no, this will actually give you less <laughs> potential earning, but it is a better way for the ecosystem, the bear market. So less gains, more security is what's happening here. It ensures an ongoing involvement and commitment to the ecosystem with fur pool. They're really banging on about the fur pool. Uh, for me, it's been less than amazing, it's my experience of using it. Fur pool is being enhanced with income streams from FurFi, which does not yet exist. They do have a pre-sale coming up for FurFi. If you'd be interested in getting into the Furio of FurFi with <laughs> Who the fuck is going to buy this shit, man? The LP token realignment makes Furpool even stronger and even less prone to impermanent loss. Well, that's nice. Why didn't you do it in the beginning? Yeah, think about these things and do them in the beginning. Make something great, launch it, make it immutable, right? And then we could buy the token. The token will go down in price if too many people sell it. Eventually, people will stop selling the token because it's too low in price. Then people will be able to enter at lower price, buy it, Price will go up. Yeah, markets. There is Furio Finance only going up. It's going up. <laughs> Never going down. Yeah. <laughs> the next step is the evolution of Furio Finance, which strengthens our resolve still further. We are not prepared to let Furio be a race to the bottom of the LMS funds or fall away into oblivion as some projects are doing. Uh, I really hope I'm not proven right here, but I think this is exactly what's going to happen to Furio before the end of 2022. Furio will continue onwards with integrity and dignity. Uh, this uh, also, I'm not going to speak about the character. The problem here is not your in the integrity or dignity of the development team is the fact that they continue to change the rules and our capital is locked. We can't do anything. All we can do is try and claim out now and escape. Yeah, jump into that lifeboat. You're right. Why the hell would anyone not want to jump in a lifeboat after you continually change the goalposts? That's the problem here. On a personal level, this really sucks for me. I have the largest team in Furio and I have continued to airdrop 
as we've agreed, I've sent 3,000 fur so far in airdrops. Uh, I've only claimed 3,600. Uh, that's why I actually haven't ROI'd yet. Silly me, I'm much like many other people in this system. I'm just sick and tired of it, and I need to make an announcement about this. This is not the kind of DeFi project I want to support anymore. I believe that we're all being taken for fools, and I want to make a stand and say that I'm done with this. This is quite hard for me because I did lead a lot of people into this project too, but we do make our own decisions when we join these projects and make sure that I say that in every single video. But I do understand that there is some part of responsibility on myself for people joining this project. Uh, for that, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say I have, a, have to apologize for it, but I am aware of it, right? Um, you know, people say crypto is a solo sport and, you know, get wrecked or win or whatever, but it is... Uh, terrible when people lose in this game. We need to get better. I'm going to get better. But I don't have a crystal ball. And I didn't know that this team were going to make so many changes so often. And basically, they destroyed their own project, essentially. That's what I believe happened. Okay, so I have been Crypto Mischief. Uh, if you are feeling down, please try to be as positive as possible. We never know this could pull through, but I'm not very hopeful. And as always, I'll be on the lookout for any bangers of projects that I believe will work in the future. But I'm going to be a lot more wary when any team has the ability to do what this team has done with my bag. So it is with a heavy heart and that do not take the decision lightly, but I will be ending my journey with Furio. I will be deleting my spe specific chat that I created for the team. I will be removing myself from the fast team chat and I will not ever be making a video about this project ever again. That's it. Peace. Be good to each other. Don't get wrecked.